Now, it's no easy task to sort out how religious toleration has been understood in the Western democracies, to examine assaults on the idea of toleration from some quarters, and to unpack the claim that public freedom to proselytize is part and parcel of a robust regime of toleration, one that I'm going to call deep toleration, based on the insistence that we can, at one and the same time, tolerate religious pluralism and advocate for the truth of our own faith. Now, the story of the emergence of a regime of toleration in the West is a long and complex one. Uh, suffice to say, and I'll say more about this as we move along, that a certain privatization of religion was part of the deal. Uh, one worshiped publicly, but the view emerged over time that the whole thing came down finally to what my own conscience told me, uh, assuming thereby much of what needs to be understood and explained, namely the formation of conscience itself. Now that's an issue, unfortunately, I'm going to have to bracket for now in the interest of time, but the question of moral formation does lurk in any discussion of this sort. How are people formed such that conscience even matters? So let's go to privatization, my own conscience. Uh, this notion, and I'm giving you a quick and dirty summary here, and then we'll unpack it further, invited a further subjectivization and interiorization of religion. You have your spirituality and I have mine. And if one holds this view, one stands back from claims that there are strong warrants for faith in a faith tradition based on what Augustine called faith-seeking understanding. That is, if faith is narrowed to the pinpoint of one, proselytizing comes to seem a violation of toleration. As if toleration means I expect no one ever to challenge my faith my spirituality, and so on, precisely because it's mine. And if you raise questions about it or try to persuade me of anything else, somehow that is an attack on my identity. Now, a second major issue, in addition to the privatization of religious faith, um, holds that, currently we hear these arguments, that the entire notion of toleration is a rather puny one. Um, that is, we hear people saying, I don't want toleration, I want recognition. Recognition of the sort that eschews normative distinctions as between beliefs and ways of being in the world. So equal normative acceptance, one might call this. And in this world, toleration is always referred to as mere toleration. The toleration is not enough. Now, those criticizing toleration from this direction tend to forget what a precious and fragile achievement toleration is, even as they decamp from the necessary debates any decent society must have about what is good, what is true, what is workable, and so on. Defenders of toleration, understood robustly, insist that it is foolish to the point of suicidal for those who are in a minority in any sense to undermine toleration. Toleration is their best bet as a world of indistinguishable um, difference is an illusion. But a commitment to deep toleration should not be simply instrumental. For deep toleration speaks to respect for persons that lies at the heart, I would suggest, of democratic possibility, and that I think should inform the international community.